Jeff Rowe from Two Hacks Garage. Well, it's time to start building a couple really small cubic inch, really rowdy, with purpose, small block Chevys. Yep. I introduced these a while back, but I kind of want to reintroduce them again. It's been about six months, and now the time is here to actually start building them. So what am I doing? Well, if you look here, I've got two small block Chevys in front of me. Both of them, like I said, are extremely small cubic inch compared to a lot of stroker motors built and all that fun jazz we see going on today. Why am I doing this? Well, we're going to recap that a little bit. If you see here, I'm sitting on my Nostalgia front engine dragster. This engine here, well, it is a 1967 block. It's the 327-302 casting, small journal, two-bolt main block. Um, Jimmy and I machined this one over about 62,000. over. We'll explain that later. Um, but this is going to be a race engine, naturally aspirated uh, for my dragster. It's going to be 311 cubic inches. And I tell you what, guys, it's going to be a buzzsaw of an engine. I have almost all the parts for this engine here. We're going to go show you some parts here in a second. Um, but I have enough pretty much to build the short block and get it in here and go from there. Um, the goal with this engine here is to hopefully make around 400 horsepower. So you got to remember this dragster way it sits right now only weighs 667 pounds. So the goal is to get this engine in here, build something somewhat budget friendly that is reliable. Um, so my son and I can get some seat time in this dragster, learn how to drive it, have a whole lot of fun, do it on a budget, do it reliable. And you know what guys just build on from there. So, that's this engine here, 311 cubic inch, 302 base, small block Chevy. It's gonna be a high wind and ripper. It's gonna employ a lot of parts from Holly, a lot of parts, well, the camshaft from Iski, and a lot of it's just kind of old school technology. It's gonna be a blast. This engine right here, this, I don't really have an intended goal of a vehicle it puts into. Um, I like the small cubic inch Chevys. I've done a lot of research over time on the 302 Chevy program. And while I don't have another 302 block, I did have something in mind. Um, I like the 283 Chevys. I think they were a great engine. There was a lot of people that made all kinds of fun, high winding power out of it. So my goal with this is I'm kind of calling it the DZ 292. Can't really call it a DZ considering what I'm doing is, is I'm taking a 19, I think 61 or 65. Anyway, 60s, 283 block, that's 283. Um, we punched it 60 over, we decked it, and it's now 292 cubic inches. Why am I saying DZ 292? Well, the 67302 technically wasn't the DZ program, but it was a 302 cubic inch small block Chevy. It was a four inch bore, three inch stroke, employed a lot of high winding uh, parts in it to really make that thing buzz like a chainsaw. So I decided, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build kind of the the thought process and all the specs behind that 67302 into a 283 and see what I can come up with with power numbers. My whole goal is to somewhat replicate all the specs of that 302. Yes, I'm going to be using some modern parts uh, mixed with a lot of older parts. We'll explain that in a minute and see what kind of power numbers I can make. Um, a lot of these parts here I'm, I sourced from Holly. A lot of them actually came from Holly. Um, however, I'm using a factory crank. I'm using an old school Holly intake, which I'll show you. And this is going to employ factory 461 heads. They're unported. Um, they have been decked, they've been machined, new valve guides, all that fun jazz. But as far as heads go, it is a factory spec head. So yeah, this is just kind of a quick video re reintroducing what engine builds come up with. Why am I reintroducing it? Well, I just got my crankshafts back, my rotating assemblies per se, back from Don's Auto Parts in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, Don's, in my opinion, is one of the more premier machine shops, speed shops, if you want to call it, in the Midwest. Heck, maybe in the, even in the United States. And they really hooked me up. Uh, Tony, the owner, Randy behind the counter, um, those guys, absolutely awesome. Their customer service is A1. They are extremely friendly, and their service is A1. The turnaround time was quick. The price was extremely reasonable. And you know what, guys? When in today's world, that really goes a long way. So future builds, I can tell you right now, some stuff I'm gonna need to be done, it's gonna go back up to Kenosha. And mind you, I live about three and a half hours south of Kenosha, so traveling for this type of stuff, you know what? That's why I do it, because of their service, their quality, and you know what, the guys are absolutely cool. Go check them out. 
So yeah, that is what I'm doing. Reintroducing two high winding small block Chevy engines that I'm building for a purpose. 311 cubic inches, naturally aspirated. I'm gonna go and jump and jack flash my dragster for my son and I, and a 292 that's gonna replicate as close as I can um, on the 302 1967 engine. It's gonna be fun. That one's gonna go on a dyno. Maybe this one too, I'm not sure yet, but yes budget friendly ish as much as i could um, reliability and you know what i'm just going to do it in my garage two hacks garage so it kind of makes sense yeah so come along the journey on two high winding small block chevys let's go check out some of the parts we got going on all right so crankshafts well you know what i got two crankshafts here all bagged up freshly machined um, the one that's going in the 292 that's a factory 283 steel crank um, it has been turned down. It's been balanced, polished and all that. Um, real quick on that though, the 283 steel crank was used in the 302. However, they were nitrided. This one's not a nitrided one, but you know what? It's still a factory steel crank. So that's going in the 292. This one here, well, this is an Eagle forged crank. It's brand new. Um, this one's going in the 311 and this has already been balanced with everything. Um, as you can see right there. And right there, they had to add a little bit of metal under some Mallory to get it all balanced out. So yeah, those are the crankshafts right there. Um, nothing special, nothing crazy. Like I said, somewhat kind of doing this on a budget and sticking to old school, you know, crank right there. It's a good crank. And there's a modern one for the race engine. Piles and piles and piles of parts. Like I said, I've been buying up parts for a while. Um, it's kind of messy right now. But as you can see, those are the factory heads right there, the 461 casting that are going on the 292. I've got an extremely rare Holly uh, intake manifold. I think I covered this one in here. This is the Dominator 2. This is actually Holly's version of the dual plane high rise that was used on the 302 Chevys. Um, various oil pans, I'll, I'll explain that as we go along. There's a reason why there's three of them. Obviously, that one's going on the race engine. Um, that's a Wyand uh, seven quart pan. We'll get into that later. And there's a factory pan right there. Um, you can probably already guess the factory pan's not getting used, and that one is, but that's for another video. As far as parts go, you can see Eagle rods. You can see seal power pistons. There's some Keith Black pistons, Iski camshafts. Holly tunnel ram carbs and like I said there's a lot of parts in here from Holly that I got and that I sourced that you know are going to go into this engine a lot of it is budget friendly um, and a lot of it you know if you just do your homework you can kind of go over and find out what you need so like I said I do have everything for the 292 to build and I'm going to start on that as soon as possible waiting on just a couple things that I had to get and that's for another video too um, and I have almost everything for the 311, but you know what guys, we need to get started building on this. And what I'm going to do as we build this, I will put the parts in here in the videos of where I got them and how much they cost. So you can kind of document along like, Hey, is he really sticking to a budget or not? So yeah, there's some of the parts right there. Pretty cool. Hope you dig it. It's going to be fun. All right. So engine blocks. Well, that right there is a factory 283. It's been decked, it's been bored 60 over. Some uh, modifications to the oiling system just for uh, better protection, better flow, all that type of fun jazz. Um, like I said, this is an early 60s casting. Nothing crazy, nothing special about it. It's just factory cast iron unit. Um, that's the 292. Um, and over here, well, that is the 311. That's that 67, 302, 327 casting. Both of them are two bolt main blocks. However, on the 311, we're going to show you how we're strengthening that up. And on the 292, kind of the same way, better, you know, just better rigidity and keep everything together at higher RPMs. Uh, as you can see, I, re I really like painting my engine blocks after I machine it, clean it, and all that fun jazz. I think it really gives better detail. If you can see, you know, like what the frost plugs in there or core plugs, where you want to call them, it just looks nicer. Besides that on camera, you know, it does look a whole lot nicer. So yeah, 283, going to be a 292, actually it is. And the 302, 327 black, that's going to be 311. So that's what I'm working with there. Those two there, both of them, like I said, have been machined. That one's about 62, 65,000. So over, I got to look at my paperwork again. Uh, we'll explain the reason why on that. Both of them have been decked, clean. They're ready to rock and roll. Like I said, that one there is going in my dragster. That one there is just a project I've always wanted to do. 
All right, so just to show you, like I said, I'm kind of doing this budget friendly. If you want to go this way, everyone works on stuff, normally just in their garage. Not everybody has a shop. I don't have a shop either. So as the name says, Two Hacks Garage, well, this hack is doing everything in his garage. Nothing crazy, nothing special. Oversized two car, tons of bench space there. Mind you, it's a little dirty doing some spring cleaning. But you look here, I got room to build two engines. I got the bench space. I got a toolbox there. Fasteners, cleaners, you name it up there. My parts over there are readily available to do what I need to do. Get, grab them in a hurry when I need them. Everything's also labeled, of course. Same thing over here. Toolbox, tons of bench space. Another toolbox. My research brainstorming center. Yeah, there's my dragster. It's sitting there waiting to get an engine put in it. But yeah, I'm literally just doing this in my garage, having fun the old school way. So there we have it, guys. Just, you know, reintroducing you to two small block Chevy builds that I've been planning for a while. Uh, I'm not doing anything crazy. You know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, older technology. Um, like I just showed you, I'm doing it in my garage. I'm going to be doing it with hand tools. There will be some specialty engine building tools that I'll be using. Probably do some product reviews on those. But kind of what I'm doing is I'm building a couple just oddball small displacement Chevys for a purpose. And doing it in my garage somewhat on a budget with stuff anybody can use. Um, it's going to be fun. And I'm going to, every video I make, I'm going to go in depth, in detail of what I'm doing. I'm going to cover both these builds as much as I can to the nth degree. The reason why I want to do that, I have been doing a lot of like measuring race math, engine stuff. And I want to show you guys how that plays into when you start building this and kind of what the results are. So yeah, just reintroducing two high winding small block Chevy engines that I, I'm just going to be honest, there's there's nothing going to be crazy about them. I know in today's world of massive cubic inches or high boost or turbo or coyote or LS and all that, you know, there's so much of it out there and it, it is awesome. It, thousands of horsepower, five, six second passes. However, that's not my goal. My goal is because I'm old school. Um, I want to show you guys how you can build a couple of unique engines. Like I said, somewhat on a budget, um, just for the fact is you know, some parts when you dealing with uh, like a race engine or whatever, they can be a little bit more pricey. And I do, I do like to buy quality parts just to make sure it holds together. Like I've always said, quality parts, good oil, proper setup, you should be good to go. So that's the goal. Come along with me as we build these two high winding small block Chevys with two hacks garage in a garage, somewhat on a budget and just overall having fun making whatever horsepower we make and we'll just build on from there. Starting soon, we're going to get going on these because I really want to get racing and I really want to see what that 292 is going to do on the dyno. With that, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you come along. See you in the next one.